This video is going to be about the heart. I'm going to start with the external features and then we'll look inside each of the chambers of the heart. Um, that's the plan. So this is the anterior or sternocostal surface of the heart. This is the apex and the apex is pointing inferiorly into the left and that apex is made up of the left ventricle. How do we know that's the left ventricle? Well, we can use these vessels right here to tell us that this is where the interventricular septum is. The interventricular septum is the wall between the two ventricles. And on the external surface, there's a groove, the interventricular groove, and this is the anterior one. And there are coronary branches of the coronary artery and there are veins in that sulcus. So to the left is the left ventricle. The sternocostal surface is formed primarily by the right ventricle. So the right ventricle I know is to the right side of these vessels. And then over here is the coronary sulcus that also has vessels in it. So between this sulcus and this sulcus is the right ventricle. So most of the sternocostal surface or anterior surface of the heart is formed by the right ventricle, a little bit by the left ventricle and then by the right atrium. We know this is the right atrium because here's the right, here's the auricle of the right atrium. And we know that because also because here's the coronary sulcus or coronary groove between the right atrium and the right ventricle. If we look at Grant's atlas, we can see the same things. This is the apex of the heart, pointing inferiorly to the left, left atrium, excuse me, <laughs> left ventricle, right ventricle, here's that anterior interventricular groove or sulcus, here's the coronary sulcus, and the right atrium with its auricle. We're gonna turn the so we're gonna look at the right atrium and a cut was made so we can look inside. And first thing I see are these ridges, these muscular ridges on the anterior wall of the right atrium. Those are called pectinate muscles and they radiate from a muscular ridge They radiate from a muscular ridge called the crista terminalis. And I think the way this was cut, okay, we might have to pause. Go ahead. Okay, we're gonna look in. Go ahead. Okay, we're gonna look inside the right atrium now. And the first thing I notice in the right atrium are these muscular ridges. These muscular ridges are called the pectinate muscles and pectinate means comb-like, and those muscular ridges radiate from a vertically oriented ridge called the crista terminalis, which is uh, difficult to appreciate on this cadaver. If we look inside the heart, if I can get the light right, how about that? Mm -hmm. If you look inside on the posterior wall, you notice the posterior wall is smooth, that's called the sinus venarum, and that's where the superior and inferior vena cava empty. So my forceps entered the inferior vena cava, and now my forceps are going through the superior vena cava. So the posterior wall is smooth, but it does have a feature that is an oval or round depression. Can you see that? You can say yes or no. Okay, good. The, that's called the fossa ovalis. And that is a remnant of a foramen that was present before birth called the foramen ovale. So the foramen ovale was an opening between the right atrium and the left atrium. So it allowed blood to flow from the right atrium to the left atrium. In some adults, um, you might see a little opening, and I think it's more common superiorly than inferiorly, and this person looks like they have it. Um, and that would be a patent um, fossa ovalis. 
um, meaning it's open, and um, that really, from my understanding, doesn't have a clinical significance, just that little bit of opening. You can also see the right atrioventricular valve, which is also called the tricuspid valve. Um, sometimes it's not a tricuspid valve, it just has two valves, but typically it's a tricuspid valve or the right atrioventricular valve. So let's go into the right atrium, I mean, excuse me, right ventricle. And so the right, right ventricle is open. We see a relatively thin wall thin chamber wall. On the interior surface of the walls, there are muscular ridges. Those are called trabeculae carnae. And then emerging from the trabeculae carnae are these large cone-like muscles, and those are called papillary muscles. So what I'm, my probe is pointing to is the anterior papillary muscle. There are three sets of papillary muscles in the right ventricle, anterior, posterior and septal. Sometimes the septal ones aren't even, don't even look like a muscle, like right here, where the chordae tendinae are just emerging from the interventricular septum. Extending from the papillary muscles are chordae tendinae. You see these fibrous cords, very strong, and those are attached to the cusps of the valve. So you can see them attaching to the cusps. Each cusp has corded, corded tendine attached to it from two sets of papillary muscles. The right ventricle has an additional specialization, and it's this, the moderator band, or the septomarginal trabecula. And this septo, septomarginal trabecula extends from the interventricular septum to the anterior papillary muscle. And it's carrying part of the conducting system of the heart. So in the interventricular septum is the atrioventricular bundle. And that bundle has a right side and a left side to it. And the right side sends fibers onto the moderator band to the Purkinje plexus of the right ventricle. So this is the moderator band, and it's going from the interventricular septum to the anterior papillary muscle. Now here's the exit, the way the blood exits. Notice how the blood from the right atrium almost travels horizontally to get into the right ventricle, and then the blood leaves the right ventricle vertically and this is called the conus arteriosus, the smooth area. Just checking, yeah, conus arteriosus or infundibulum. And um, if we look down, and I'll try to close the valve. So this is the pulmonary valve. Don't know how great that's gonna show up on camera. I'm opening, it's a, it's three valvules, make a semilunar valve, that's the pulmonic valve. That's the pulmonic valve. Let's look at it in the book. So this is the right ventricle, this is Grant's atlas. Here are the papillary muscles chordae tendine, moderator band, or septomarginal trabecula. This is the conus arteriosus, or infundibulum. And then you can see the inferior surface of the cusps of the pulmonary valve. And they're named by their position, right and left, and then anterior. So the right and left are really positioned posterior, but they're called right and left, and then this is the anterior one. So the deoxygenated blood that's leaving the right ventricle exits through the pulmonary valve, goes to the pulmonary trunk, 
and the valvules of the pulmonic valve fill with blood and they shut to prevent regurgitation. So if we go back to the heart, right atrium, we went from the right atrium to the right ventricle, and then the blood exited the right ventricle through the pulmonary trunk. Here. Pulmonary trunk goes to the right and left pulmonary arteries. Those go to the lungs, and then the blood returns from the lungs, oxygenated, and enters the left atrium via these pulmonary veins. The left atrium on this cadaver isn't open, but the left atrium is very smooth, walled. Um, it does have an auricle that, um, uh, here it is. Here's the left atrium's auricle, and that will have some pectinate muscles in it. Okay, pause. So this is the left atrium that we've been looking at, and I said it wasn't open, so I'm gonna open it with some scissors. I think I have the scissors turned upside down. So you can see inside and see how smooth walled it is. Okay, here's the oracle of the left atrium. So I can probably stick my probe into it, yep, from that chamber. Um, so if we look down the atrium, you should be able to see the bicuspid valve or the left atrioventricular valve or the opening for it right here where my probe is sticking. So the blood came into the left atrium by way of the pulmonary veins and then it's going to leave the left atrium, go through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle. So let's go to the left ventricle and here it is. This right here is a valve of the bicuspid valve. So if I stick my probe up this way, okay, we're going to go back to the left atrium. You can see the probe coming up through the valve the left atrioventricular valve or the bicuspid valve, or it also goes by mitral. Okay, go back to the left ventricle. So we see similar things to the right ventricle. We see the trabeculae carne, the little more well-developed in the left ventricle. We see the papillary muscles. There are gonna be two sets of papillary muscles in the left ventricle compared to the right ventricle that had three sets. The number of sets of papillary muscles corresponds to the number of cusps for the valve. And you can really see this cusp and the chordae tendinae attaching from the papillary muscle to the cusp of the valve. This one's a really nice size papillary, oh, excuse me, chordae tendinae. Um, the other feature of this ventricle is look how thick the wall is. Much thicker than the wall of the right ventricle. And that's because of the pressure that the right ventricle has to push against is much greater than the pressure that the right ventricle has to push against. So now the blood's gonna leave the right ventricle and exit through the aortic valve and this cut, cut right through the ascending aorta. So, okay, so the blood's gonna leave the left ventricle and exit through the aortic valve and then enter the ascending aorta. The way this cut was made, it was cut through the aorta. So I'm gonna close it back up and you can see the aorta here, the ascending aorta. And I'm gonna open it back up and then you can see, so it's really helpful to see the valves so there are three semilunar valvules, and just like the pulmonary valve, the structure of the aortic valve and the structure of the pulmonary valve are similar. And so the blood will exit, and then it'll these sinuses will catch the blood and close the valve to prevent regurgitation. I also want to put out, put out, point out 
the openings for the coronary arteries. So here's the left coronary artery and you can see the opening of the left coronary artery very near that sinus. Could you see that? Yes. Yes, good. And then over here on the right, we can see the opening for the right coronary. Right there. So the right and left coronary arteries are the first branches off the aorta. They're coming off the ascending aorta. So check out that relationship. Here's the aortic sinus for the aortic valve, and then there's the opening for the right coronary. So I know that was kind of a long video, but it showed external features um, and internal features of the heart. Hope that was helpful.